the condensation of two ester molecules in the presence of molten sodium to give alpha hydroxy ketones is known as acyloin condensation. The product alpha hydroxy ketone is actually known as the acyloin and therefore the name acyloin condensation. In this video, we're going to study the mechanism of acyloin condensation. So let's begin. Because we are dealing with molten sodium, you know that sodium being an electropositive metal can provide an electron to this ester molecule. And in fact, because there are two ester molecules here condensing together, so two sodium atoms will provide one electron each to these ester molecules. So let's see what happens with these molecules. So we have an ester here. In fact, two molecules of ester, and because we are dealing with sodium metal, so sodium will be in zero state, that is in metallic form, and so two atoms of sodium will provide one electron each to these ester molecules. And this electron will obviously be provided to the carbonyl carbon because that is electrophilic in nature. And this transfer of electron, single electron transfer to this carbonyl carbon will push these pi electrons towards the oxygen, giving rise to a radical anion in this form. A radical at the previously carbonyl carbon and an oxy anion, which has sodium plus one as the counter ion now. So we will have two radical anions generated because we started off with two ester molecules. And you know that these two radicals can then condense together. So let me write it separately here. I remove two from here. So we will have two radical anions generated. Now these two radicals can form a bond with each other. And so as a result, we will have a coupled product like this or a intermediate like this. Now, because we have two oxy anions and this is an unstable situation, so this anion collapses back to form the carbonyl moiety, which will obviously push the alkoxy group out of the system and as a result we will have the formation of two ketones. So this will remove the uh, alkoxy groups which will be taken by the sodium ions and as a result we will have the formation of 1,2 diketone. This 1,2 diketone is again attacked by the sodium atoms. In fact, two sodium atoms will provide one electron each to these carbonyl carbons forming a diradical dianion again. So one electron is transferred to this carbonyl carbon and the other is transferred to this carbonyl carbon pushing these pi electrons towards oxygen forming a diradical dianion like this and because we have a diradical situation these two radicals can share their electrons to form a pi bond with the oxy anions still there in the system Now, in the final workup step, we will acidify these anions. So we add H plus, and so this acid will convert these oxy anions into OH groups. And so we have the formation of these uh, enols. Now, one of these enols will tautomerize into a keto form. And you know that tautomerism is always uh, written in this form. 
and because the final product is more stable so the equilibrium is shifted more towards this SI line. So you can see that uh, one of these ketones will, uh, sorry, one of these enols will tautomerize into a ketone and as a result we will have a hydroxyl group at the alpha position and this final product is known as the SI line. So this is all about SI line condensation. Uh, you can see that two ester molecules condense together in the presence of sodium metal in molten form to give alpha hydroxy ketone, which in other words is known as the SI line. Stay tuned for some more named reactions in organic chemistry. Thank you so much for now.